Good morning. My name is Tracy Tripuck. Welcome to Your Health Matters. Today we join many in the U.S. who are preparing for Mental Illness Awareness Week, MIAW, a national campaign established by Congress in 1990 and held in the first full week of October uh, this year, and it occurs this year in October 5th through the 11th. Mental Illness Awareness Week is a week-long campaign with the goal of reducing stigma and promoting understanding in the community. It also coincides with National Depression Screening Day, which occurs on Thursday, October 9th. So before I introduce my guests, I'd like to share some important information. One in four adults, approximately 61.5 million Americans, experience mental illness in a given year. Approximately 20% of youth ages 13 to 18 experience severe mental disorders in a given year. For ages 8 to 15, the estimate is 13%. 70% of youth in the juvenile justice systems have at least one mental health condition and at least 20% live with a severe mental illness. Approximately 60% of adults and almost half of youths age 8 to 15 with mental illness receive no mental health services in the previous year. Serious mental illness costs America $193.2 billion in lost earnings per year. Mood disorders such as depression are the third most common cause of hospitalization in the U.S. for both youth and adults ages 18 to 44. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. and veterans represent 20% of suicides nationally. Each day almost 22 veterans die from suicide, almost one per hour. And now I would like to introduce my guests. Um, today in the studio, we have with us Paula Fries. Uh, she is the COO for the Association for Mental Health and Wellness here in Suffolk County. And Rachel Priest, who is the Community Health Educator and Helpline Resource Specialist from the Mental Health Association of Nassau County. I want to thank you both for joining us. This is uh, an important topic, and I uh, appreciate uh, you both coming here today. Um, so, Paula, last year your organization promoted positive dialogue about mental health as it relates to overall wellness. Um, and you also have reached out to, to more people in the community, other stakeholders as well. Um, so can you uh, tell us a little bit about what's going to be different this year? Um, Absolutely. Um, just a little history as to why we took this direction. Uh, um, for 20 years we were holding um, a conference every day not every day, excuse me, one day out of the week in MIA week, um, and would bring in uh, very well-known people from actors to sports figures who would speak personally about their own experience with mental illness and recovery. Um, after doing that for 20 years, we decided the whole purpose of the week is really to bring it to the community at large. So we took a different direction last year, and we partnered with lots of organizations in the community to promote awareness and a dialogue about mental health and that mental health matters and to help reduce the, um, the prevalence of stigma. And it was an incredible success. And this year we decided to incorporate and partner with our sister agency in Nassau County, the Mental Health Association, in order to make it a bi-county effort mm -hmm. at um, bringing the dialogue to the community where it belongs. And so, um, Rachel, before uh, you get a chance to respond, I do want to applaud both agencies for this bi-county effort and for ha having um, these events spread out all throughout Nassau and Suffolk County all, all of the days of um, Mental Illness Awareness Week. Um, so would, would you like to explain how um, your organization got involved and what you're going to be doing as well? Sure. Last year we were very lucky that um, Suffolk County um, helped us advertise the Nassau County events. So it was really a natural progression for us to work together this year, um, find out what events were taking place, find out what events we could put on, find out how we could advertise each other's events, and really work together to capture as many people on Long Island for this week. Okay, so um, now when we're discussing these events, there is a calendar of events, and that is available on the website. I do have a few that I'd like to, to um, you know, address with you, but uh, they can go to what website to get um, the calendar of events? Yes, the full calendar is located at www 
miaweek.org, and you'll see everything. It starts on uh, Sunday, October 5th through um, October 12th, and we have close to 30 events happening within the community um, from all across uh, different uh, groups and organizations partnering with us to help get the message out mm -hmm. and to promote the dialogue. And um, can you discuss, you're going to be beginning on Sunday the 5th with the Military and Veterans Family Day? Yes. Um, the North Shore LIJ um, uh, Behavioral Health Center located in Bayshore for veterans and military families is kicking off the event with a family day. It's open to the community at large. It's geared towards veterans and their families, but anybody could show up to gain awareness and get information. Um, I'm not sure where it's actually located and happening, but that's a good reason then to visit the website. And again, I can't emphasize enough that it's free and um, it's open to the public, and that mm. starts on October Sunday, October 5th. And so you have your kickoff event now on Monday. It's yes. a town hall meeting. Um, you're yes. Wanting, uh, sure. Go ahead we and are on starting that. off on Monday morning, October 6th, at the Huntington Hilton in Melville with a panel presentation and discussion, we're calling it a town hall meeting, with some of the leading um, thinkers and um, visionaries and uh, to discuss and talk about the state of mental health um, within the region, the Long Island um, area. We have Harvey Rosenthal coming from the New York Association for Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services. We have Sheriff uh, Vincent DeMarco to talk about the impact of mental illness in the Suffolk County jail system. We have uh, Commissioner Ann Sullivan coming from the Office of Mental Health and about two or three other panelists that I don't remember their names, mm -hmm. but it's going to be an incredibly lively discussion. The theme of it is asking the right questions, exploring new solutions. And again, it's to open up and kick off the week and to build a platform for where mm -hmm. we move. Okay, and I just want to take this opportunity to um, thank Sheriff uh, Vincent DeMarco from Suffolk County for participating in this. Um, I was invited to their open house on Sunday and they had a, a really um, great uh, number of family members come out to be present, but um, the sheriff's office does have a lot of um, good programs mm -hmm. that are, are public health related. Um, so I'm glad that they're participating um, in your open house uh, on your in your kickoff event. And now, um, would you like to talk? Your event is going to be on Tuesday in yes. Melville. Is that is that correct, Rachel? My open house is uh, actually in Hempstead. At Hem our, I'm sorry, Hempstead. At our organization, it's on right. 16 Main Street in Hempstead. Uh, we're having an open house called Ask Your Question. Uh, our organization, plus a lot of the other organizations on Long Island for mental health, can be very confusing. People who don't know what the services that are available, how they can access these services, mm -hmm. how do you pay for these services, what are these services. So our Ask Your Question is going to uh, feature several different departments from our organization. We're going to have... Um, people from our peer department called Consumer Link. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Pros, which is a day program for personalized recovery oriented services. We're going to have somebody from our care coordination, mm -hmm. formerly known as case management. And we're also going to have um, myself from information or referral if people are looking for phone numbers, hotlines, anything that they're really interested in and they can come in it's a two hour you can drop in mm -hmm. drop out when you know however you feel comfortable to get the information that you're looking for and it's okay. also free okay. so and not to, to bypass any of the events of because each one is very important and you have so you know many on each day um, but I would like to uh, to fast forward to next Thursday October 9th which is um, National Depression Screening Day and there is an anonymous screening uh, that mm -hmm. that people can take and it and it is not anonymous um, at www.helpyourselfhelpothers.org mm -hmm. uh, um, and when a person takes this uh, screening and say uh, they're doing it because uh, they have a loved one or for themselves um, what it, what are the prompts at the end as far as if they do need to receive um, some you know some kind of uh, mental health uh, services well, usually with um, such a type of tool that's on the web, it basically is really to help promote awareness that you may mm -hmm. need to seek additional um, uh, um, discussion and resources in the community with a, 
a treatment professional, mm -hmm. but it really is to help um, promote awareness and to say there are resources out there and maybe you need to go to talk to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It is not considered um, um, an actual diagnostic tool, but it really is to help lead people in the right direction, okay. much, much like getting your blood pressure mm -hmm. read or getting your blood sugar tested. This is really to help people understand that this is a, a, a very um, treatable condition mm -hmm. and it is something to take serious and to look for further guidance and assistance around and there is a wealth of information out there. Yes, um, and also to add to the online screening tool, during the week, uh, New Health Family Centers, which are a part of NUMC mm -hmm. in East Benno, they will be doing um, screenings in their family health centers mm -hmm. um, throughout the Freeport, Roosevelt, Uniondale, East Meadow area. Um, and that information can also be found um, on the website mhanc.org. Um, which also links back to the Suffolk County calendar of events. Okay. Absolutely. And all of these websites and um, the hotline numbers will also be shown on the screen okay. um, either during the show or at the end of the show, just to yes. let you know, um, so we don't have to keep spelling them all out. But it is very important to get that information out there. I noticed that you have um, you have uh, events targeted for, for youth mental illness, for um, those in the lesbian, gay, um, mm -hmm. bisexual, transgender community. Um, and uh, families with uh, from domestic violence and mm -hmm. um, faith-based. So you really are covering uh, quite a bit of, of territory. And uh, how long has it taken you to set up um, doing this this week? I was curious well, about that. That's a great question. We actually start planning the events um, a year in advance. Mm -hmm. Each year we have a committee that gets together and we begin by brainstorming ideas. Like um, we start with like, you know, what may be current in the news, because oftentimes that helps to push a dialogue forward. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to reach out to our partners. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. We have a community or a committee that's made up of all different kinds of people. Um, again, we bring in people from the community, from the faith-based community, from other organizations, um, from um, the medical com uh, community, uh, across the board. It isn't just within the mental health domain, because mm -hmm. we the goal is really to bring it back out into the community at large, into the world where people really live, and to begin to promote awareness and to begin to break down mm -hmm. this wall of stigma and promote. Thank you. That um, was you know, j that is probably one of the biggest yes, hurdles that we do. That's what I was just going to ask you because uh, actually, um, I saw something about you know stigma and accompanying shame. And mm -hmm. Rachel, I'm going to toss to you in just a second, but sure. I wanted to ask Paul. Um, Michael Stoltz was quoted recently in Newsday um, with regard to um, the, the terrible tragedy of, of Robin Williams, um, that hopefully as a society we will insist on getting uncomplicated and affordable access to treatment, increased peer support, and a greater understanding and acceptance between mental health and physical health. Um, so if we could just briefly discuss that and then segue back into the stigma part. Oh, certainly. parody, parody of services that we were trying to discuss, or, you know, earlier, uh, prior to the show. Absolutely. Well, for too long, you know, probably um, for the past 50 or 60 years, we had this incredible split between dealing with um, uh, medical conditions that involved what we call the head and divorcing it from what was going on with the body. And we are finally coming full circle and looking at the whole person and whole health. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot have... Um, whole body health without considering what's going on with mental health. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the whole person and we're actually moving back to a world of what we called integrated health care, where behavioral health care and physical health care is not separated. And the beauty of that, again, is addressing it, uh, that moved it forward was demanding that um, these conditions be given the same parity in the health care world and in the insurance reimbursement mm -hmm. world as for physical health that there was, you know, oftentimes there was this incredible um, discrimination and separation and rationing of healthcare services. So we are beginning, that has been changed, the ball has been moved forward. Mm -hmm. We still have many hurdles to overcome between New York State uh, parity, um, which is in effect for quite a few years, and that was called Timothy's Law. And in addition to that, now we have federal health parity, yes. which has been championed mm -hmm. by Patrick Kennedy. Um, so we're at mm -hmm. that point, and it is, again, about when you, you need to have the dialogue about 
the whole person and bringing that into the primary care setting mm -hmm. and beginning yes. to break down those barriers of just asking the right question yes. and looking for solutions will help to have the person understand that this is a whole health condition. Mm -hmm. And that will go, you have to ask and talk and be open to have those discussions with, and that's the only way stigma falls. Right. And mm -hmm. Rachel, so, so I'm Plus, sorry. I just mm -hmm. wanted to bring up that the community forum we're having mm -hmm. is actually addressing these directly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that, um, you know, people are talking mm -hmm. and listening. So I just wanted to ask you then, could you just discuss for a moment, you know, stig stigma and, and how you feel we need to move forward in trying to destigmatize, you know, an illness that... That is, as you said, you know, it's what we're, we need to think about the whole body. Um, and um, and the, when you keep saying, like, we need to find out what the right questions are, give us some, because you, you're mm -hmm. involved with that. Yes. What are some of the questions? Um, I myself um, have bipolar disorder plus a bunch of other diagnoses that really don't matter. <laughs> um, and I've been dealing with stigma for a very long time now. Um, so I personally know what it's like to go through life with people looking at you and viewing you differently because of an illness or a disorder or whatever, you, whatever name you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the reason I got involved in mental health care um, because I know what kind of toll it can take on a person and their family. Um, it's not a, a one person issue. It can affect everybody around you. Um, what I do is I, I, I work with um, a group of individuals who also ha are in recovery from mental illness and go into high schools to work with teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, but personally, on my own, I do a lot of um, writing about mental illness. Um, I do a lot of blogging about it mm -hmm. um, because it's one of those issues that is not going away, and we need to be able to speak about it. There's no shame right. in having a mental illness. There's no shame in heart disease. So why do, we shouldn't have a difference, and there is one. And I am starting to see people kind of opening their eyes. But events like Mental Illness Awareness Week target the, everyone mm -hmm. who needs to be aware of what's happening. Yes. First, I really want to appreciate you for sharing oh. um, your your story, and um, that resonates very well the the stigma that I'm always hearing about. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like it's almost the last frontier. But in in addition to getting full parity, which you know we should we should be getting, but we 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 know that there are doctors that will only take cash, you mm -hmm. know, patients and and. Um, but it seems between par the parity issue in healthcare and stigma, those are the two most important, um, as from what, what, from me looking at it, are the two most important hurdles um, to to try to overcome. Is do you agree? Do you see that there are other things as well? Well, absolutely. Um, th it, it, this is a rights issue, mm -hmm. and it's also um, for many. Um, it's also it, it, it's. Breaking down the walls around cultural issues also, the yes. more comfortable we become mm -hmm. about talking, um, and I'm not saying, you know, um, it, it's about promoting dialogue and talking about the human nature of um, what each of us experiences. And when people begin to share that, um, it breaks down so many myths and walls to accessing healthcare and also promoting healing. Mm -hmm. So moving this dialogue forward is critical. Um, there is a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. There's a tremendous amount of um, the things that hold people back from seeking health and treatment is because of um, the aspect of, if I share this, I'll be discriminated against, I will mm -hmm. be ostracized, I will be shamed, and um, you know, we have to address those issues, mm -hmm. and we have to um, uh, take them seriously, um, but not give up and um, uh, throw in the card. It's to take action and to be out there and speak mm -hmm. about it. Okay. Would you like to address that? I think that, you know, Paula said it perfectly and a lot more professionally <laughs> that sounding than sounding than I could have, but um, advocacy is such a key issue. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's for someone you love or if it's for yourself, 
if they don't hear our, our voices, mm -hmm. things aren't going to start to change. And um, I've advocated for myself for a long time, and I see, I see what families are going through as an information or referral specialist when they mm -hmm. call me looking for resources and they have such difficulties. So the more voices that are speaking, mm -hmm. um, and the louder that the they louder, speak, yes. the resources are going to start popping up slowly probably at mm -hmm. first, but they're there and they're gonna come forward. Mm -hmm. That, that was going to be actually one of my next questions, is what are some of the resources that are available out there, um, especially, uh, you know, in times of crisis, either for a family member who sees a loved one um, in, in a crisis situation or for a person, you know, themselves who recognizes that there's a need. Um, what, and, and say they might be afraid to go to the doctor because of, you know, the stigma, but there are some anonymous... Um, Absolutely. Uh, telephone lines yes. and yes well actually um, we have a helpline and the MHA um, Association in Nassau County they have a helpline also um, our helpline can be reached at 631-226-3900 and what we do is we help to answer questions that people have um, it's anonymous you call up you might be seeking a practitioner you might be seeking information on a local uh, program or benefits issues. Um, we have skilled staff that are there to answer those questions and link you with what's available in the community. And also, if they don't have the answer, I guarantee you, if you're willing to receive a call back, they will take your, your number and they will get back to you and try to find an answer. So there are resources out there. This is a helpline. Mm -hmm. There are lots of hotlines for people who are in crisis mm -hmm. that they can contact also. Um, and they will also give you that information. Um, but there's, uh, there is a wealth of information out there available on the Internet, but sometimes you need someone to talk to to yes. help you to figure out what direction to take next. Okay, we're starting to um, come close to the end of our show, but there's still a few things that um, we have time to discuss. Um, Rachel, can you discuss like, if, um, some of the questions and some of like the do's and the don'ts when there's a person that um, you know uh, you want to try and start a dialogue with uh, with sure. someone that you that you think might be uh, in need of some assistance? One of one of the main uh, questions that I've found um, is people like to say, "What's wrong with you?" Mm -hmm. Asking somebody what's wrong with them is never a helpful thing. You can ask somebody, perhaps, did something happen? You seem to be feeling down. Is there something making you feeling this way? Or really, just the basic, would you like to talk? I'm here to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, no judgment, no really, oh, well, if you think that's bad, listen to what happened to me. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, no matter what situation, nobody really wants to have a comparison to the person they're having this talk with. This is a heavy topic. Yes. Um, and it's a difficult one for a lot of people. So just being able to ask the question, mm -hmm. do you need some help? They may not say yes right away, but knowing that you are available to them is really key um, mm -hmm. for them to seek oh, treatment. Because you've opened that door sure. for a possible conversation down the road. Right. Because sometimes patients um, or well, people who have mental illness um, also feel shame or, within their own family, mm -hmm. so they don't feel like yes. they can even discuss this matter you know, with their family. Absolutely. Um, so family support is very important, mm -hmm. and I know that that, that is um, one of the the events that you have um, yes. you know, uh, during the week. If I could add one thing too, there is um, a tremendous movement going on in the country uh, spearheaded by Mental Health America, which is our, our parent agency for each of our mental health associations, um, that is uh, promoting education in the community called Mental Health First Aid. And yes. the concept behind it is that just mm -hmm. like we have first aid or first aid responses, mm -hmm. if we see somebody in physical distress, this is about understanding and recognizing that you may see mental health distress. Mm -hmm. And it isn't about being then, you know, the, um, the treating person or the diagnostic right. uh, treating person. It's about recognizing those um, uh, situations and being able to gear somebody towards getting appropriate care, mm -hmm. much like on, and, um, you know, doing CPR in the community. Right. And, and we, that's really exciting. And we're very lucky because 
both from my organization and your organization. Yes. Um, they, um, we had two lovely women, Melanie and Alexis, are trained mm -hmm. in youth mental health first aid, and they will That's be actually wonderful. holding these, um, the workshop for mm -hmm. it uh, on October 10th. Okay. Okay, so we are running very, very close to being out of time, so, but I do have my final, my final question, if you could just try to answer it, you know, as briefly as you can. Um, what do you see is the biggest need to assist those with mental illness, um, and um, what are the biggest challenges ahead um, to, in mental illness awareness and trying to end the stigma? For me, I think it is about um, promoting community dialogue and discussion um, and that, you know, chipping away at that and um, making it more natural and putting it in our natural support systems mm -hmm. will um, help to reduce the burden of stigma. And absolutely, we need to be very aggressive on the advocacy side yes. about um, uh, increasing resources and access to resources in the community. There, um, there's still disparity out there, and we need to not give, mm -hmm. be tireless about that and give up the yeah. fight. I, I very much agree. She, she and I are okay. very much on the same page <laughs> with this. Um, what I see as a huge barrier right now is um, cultural differences are not addressed mm -hmm. properly as well as they should be. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a huge stigma within the different cultural lines. Yes. And that's something that I think needs a lot of focus because even at the beginning of the show, you said different right. disparities mm -hmm. exist and they need to be addressed. Right. And maybe we can have you come back for another show to discuss that. But I do know that the numbers in, in other um, you know, ethnic um, uh, groups are, are much lower for yes. seeking yes. help than they are for... Um, you know, uh, Caucasian Americans. Yes. So, um, okay, well, um, that, thank you uh, uh, both very much. That concludes your health matters for today. Again, I want to thank our guests, Paula Fries, the COO from the Association for Mental Health and Wellness in Suffolk County, and Rachel Priest from the Community Health Educator and Healthline Resource Specialist from the National Health Association of Nassau County. I applaud the work that both of your organizations are doing, and I especially by working on this important issue in a bi-county effort. Thank you both for joining me. Please join Your Health Matters next week to discuss another important topic, domestic violence awareness, with special guest Allie Mintz from Vibes. Thank you, and have a good day.